My name is Jim Olson. I have the honor of being the president of the Johnson County Chapter of the United Nations Association of the USA. Uh, UNA USA is a national membership, nonpartisan organization that works in communities and on campuses across the country to inform citizens about the work, the life-saving and life-changing work of the United Nations, and also to advocate for strong, constructive U.S. participation in the U.N. Uh, it seems to me that with the headlines about the coronavirus, that the importance of international cooperation and strong, effective international organizations would be obvious. Uh, the one UN agency, the World Health Organization, is helping to coordinate the worldwide effort to combat what, what has now been defined, identified today as the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, that just shows that international organizations are not an option, they're not a luxury, but they're absolutely essential on this fragile planet. Our chapter here in Johnson County has about 100 members. Uh, we work to inform people in our county about the work of the UN. We are in communication with our Iowa congressional delegation, uh, Representative Dave Loebsack and Senators Grassley and Ernst, to show them that whatever they may think, there is actually a constituency here in Johnson County that is asking for the United States to be a constructive member of the UN. Our event today is time to coincide with International Women's Day, which is celebrated around the world on, on um, March 8th. <clears throat> and uh, it's called Night of a Thousand Dinners, which is a very funny name. And you may wonder, what, what does that mean, Night of a Thousand Dinners? We have been doing this program annually for 20 years. And when it first started, it was part of a national effort to have dinners all over the country in support of landmine clearance. Well, the landmine clearance issue, while still important, has um, the, the campaign has uh, has changed, and so, but we've still retained the name Night of a Thousand Dinners to mark our community celebration of International Women's Day. Right now, as we meet. Uh, the, the UN and US participation in the UN is under attack from the Trump administration. Uh, the Trump administration for the third year in a row has submitted a budget request to Congress which would slash US funding for the UN regular budget, for UN peacekeeping operations, and for UN agencies like the World Health Organization. The Trump administration has made the same request for three years. In previous years, it's been beaten back by Congress. Congress has uh, restored the funding, but we can't take that for granted. And so we have on your table, each table, a petition. And if you agree with, that, with the sentiments in that petition, we ask you to sign, and we will collect those and deliver those to our Iowa congressional delegation. I'd like to thank the committee that put together this evening's event. Uh, the members of the committee are here. Uh, Meg Keekafer, Claire Ja, Katie Hansen, Sam Weedner, Bob Burnham, Nataya Burnham, and, uh, and uh, Carolina Herrera, who I'm going to introduce in a moment. So if you're enjoying the evening, you have them to thank. And let's give them a round of applause. And, and of those hardworking committee members, I'd especially like to recognize Natalia and Bob Burnham, who have organized the food so capably as they have for many years. So a special shout out to them. I'd like to uh, introduce other members of our chapter board who are here. I already mentioned Katie Hansen, Bob, and Nataya. They are members of our board. Also, Barbara Eckstein, Janice Weiner, and, uh, and John Fuller. So they are three additional members of our chapter board. And we're also pleased to have several members of the board of the Iowa United Nations which is Association, which is our, our statewide affiliate. Uh, Nancy Porter, 
uh, Sandy Eskin, John Frazier, and E.J. Gallagher. I might point out also that E.J. Gallagher has come all the way from Waterloo in Cedar Falls. He is the president of our UNA chapter in the Cedar Valley. So thank, thank you all for your service. I'd like to recognize uh, Dave Lesht, who is the representative of uh, Representative Dave Loebsack, who is with us tonight. Dave, welcome. Thank you. I'd also like to uh, recognize former Mayor Jim Throgmorton, who has been with us on many occasions. And Mayor Teague is here, and we will introduce him uh, in a moment. But right now, I'd like to introduce my colleague, uh, Carolina Herrera, who is the president of the UNA chapter on the campus of the University of Iowa, and she will also bring greetings. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Carolina Herrera, like Jim said, and I am part of the campus chapter here at the University of Iowa. And UNA USA was founded basically to inspire, educate, and mobilize Americans into supporting the principles and the vital work of the United Nations. So as a campus chapter, our mission is to promote those values on campus and with University of Iowa students, because it is important that we build a coalition and a movement that um, will support the United Nations in the future and that will fight for what the United Nations stands for. So, um, with that being said, if you are a student that would like to join our campus chapter, or if you know somebody, a young person that would like to join us and help us with this fight, please come talk to me and Jim because we would love to talk to you more about it. Um, there's so many things that you can do to help promote these values in your everyday life and in the world. So, um, with that being said, thank you so much for coming to this event. There was a lot of work put into this, and we are extremely happy that you guys are here to join us. So, thank you. So now it's my honor to introduce Mayor Bruce Teague, who newly, newly identified as the mayor of Iowa City, and uh, I think this may be the first night of a thousand dinners he's attended. We welcome you, Mayor. We're just so, so pleased that you're with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm very honored to be here with you all tonight. Um, it is um, truly an honor to see all the smiling faces out here um, when we're talking about the United Nations and all the work that you do. So thank you for all that you do. So um, as an organization, you all continue to you know, do the work and it benefits our local communities and to advocate for constructive U.S. leadership in the U.N. Let us also observe International Women's Day, an occasion to recommit to the cause of equality and expanded opportunities for women. I'm excited about this opportunity and this event, it is totally awesome and amazing. Uh, you've lined up this evening and I'm ready for some more people to come up here and do some presentations. Uh, thanks to all the hard work from the organizers and, the, and all of you community members here today, and I'm happy to know that um, Janice Weiner, Councilor Janice Weiner, is one of the board members of the UN. She sits with me on Iowa City Council. Um, without this and without you all, this event wouldn't be possible tonight. It is also outstanding to gaze around in the crowd to know and feel the true meaning of community. Thank you for representing what our city has to offer and conducting yourselves with such compassion and dedication to inclusion. Your talents and gifts and expertise are a blessing to all of us when our, within our community. The UNA's devotion to the characteristics is exactly what the city of Iowa City exhibits, inclusivity and welcoming to all people from across the world into our nation, into this community. I am truly grateful and thankful to be in the presence of all of you in the United Nations Association in celebration and observance of International Women's Day. On behalf of the city of Iowa City, I thank you for playing your part in connecting the world, your efforts, and making this world a better place. Now let us enjoy this celebration together. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to call your attention to the, to the back cover of your program where our events co-sponsors are listed. We're just uh, so pleased and grateful to have the support and participation of 20 organizations and local businesses. So kindly take note of that and we're extremely gratitude. Some of their representatives are here this evening and we thank you for this, this support. Uh, I think this does truly reach beyond our rather small organization and helps us embrace and engage a larger segment of the community. At this time, I would like to introduce uh, Janice Weiner, who is a member of the Iowa City City Council and also a member of the board of our chapter. And Janice will be making the presentations to our three honoree organizations. Thank you, Jim. Thank you all for coming. As you, could, you can tell, I'm not Britta Loftus. She was unable to come this evening. Um, but I thank Britta for, for providing me with the notes to make the presentations tonight. Last year, we began the tradition of using this opportunity to honor three local organizations that work locally and support women. We're continuing that tradition for the second year tonight. This year, we have selected th these organizations in recognition of International Women's Day, the 75th anniversary of the United Nations and the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. The first honoree we're recognizing this evening is Combined Efforts Theater. Combined Efforts Theater was founded in 2001 by Janet Schlapkohl. The theater is a nonprofit visual and performing arts company that seeks purposeful collaboration between artists with and without disabilities. The goal of the theater is simple, performances in which disability drops from consideration as a result of the combined efforts of a diverse group of individuals. Combined Efforts Theater seeks to facilitate collaboration between artists with and without physical and mental challenges, foster company connections with community groups, promote growth and learning in voice, movement, and expressive skills of all participants, and to present high quality and entertaining performances and shows. Company members have previously been recognized with the Richard Maibaum Human Rights Award, Iowa City's Isabel Turner Human Rights Award, and the Finkbein Award for Human Rights. In 2013, Combined Efforts Theater was offered a contract by the Kennedy Center, Washington, D.C., to provide playwriting workshops throughout the area in 2013, 14, and 15. We chose to honor Combined Efforts Theater tonight because the United Nations has recognized that a disability-inclusive development is an essential condition for a sustainable future. In 2006, the UN adopted the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. In 2015, the United Nations adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, pledging to leave no one behind in the global efforts to realize the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And in 2018, the UN launched a first ever UN flagship report on disability and the Sustainable Development Goals, the, Dis the Disability and Development Report on the Realization of the Sustainable Development Goals by, for, and with persons with disabilities. This report is important for the UN's continuing work to advance the rights of persons with disabilities in the implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of the Sustainable Development Goals. Accepting this recognition on behalf of com combined efforts this evening are Lynn Sybil White, Bree Atwood, and Sujit Singh. Would you please come up to accept your certificate? The next honoree we're recognizing tonight is the Johnson County Chapter of the League of Women Voters. The League envisions a democracy where every person has the desire, the right, and the knowledge, as well as the confidence to participate. The League believes in the power of women 
to create a more perfect democracy. Its mission is empowering voters, defending democracy. The League is proud to be a nonpartisan, to be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing candidates or political parties at any level of government, but always working on vital issues of concern to members and the public. The League acts locally to achieve solutions in the public interest on key community issues at all government levels, to build citizen participation in the democratic process, and to engage communities in promoting positive solutions to public policy issues through education and advocacy. We believe that recognizing the League this year in particular is appropriate because 2020 is the year we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The 19th Amendment states, quote, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex, unquote. Along with other organizations, the League has been involved in an effort to commemorate the anniversary called Hard Won, Not Done, which focuses on the right to vote from an Iowa perspective. The commemoration recognizes that the gains have been hard won and that the status today is not done. You can visit their website for, for, the, for the commemoration to learn about the legacy of suffragists in Iowa and find many upcoming events related to the anniversary. Accepting this recognition on behalf of the League of Women Voters is, I believe, uh, Cindy Conger. Is Cin are you here this evening? Yes. Cindy is president of the League of Women Voters of Johnson County, and I'm pleased to prevent you, present you with this certificate. Okay, thank you. I'll move this down, maybe. Good evening. Uh, many of our members are not here, I believe, because they are at Lobby Day in Des Moines. But I will recognize the ones that are here in just a moment. But I just want to say on behalf of all the members of the League of Women Voters and on behalf of the current president, I'm past president, Kathy Eisenhofer, I want to express our gratitude to you for honoring us in this way. Uh, because this is the 75th anniversary of the United Nations and the 100th anniversary also of the League of Women Voters, by the way. So a very special moment for us. These two organizations, the United Nations and the League of Women Voters, have a long history together. After World War II, the League carried out a nationwide campaign at the request of Franklin Roosevelt to help build public understanding of the Dumbarton Oaks and Bretton Woods agreements that established the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. The League trained at that time more than 5,000 speakers and distributed more than a million brochures during a six-month period. At the UN Charter Conference in 1945, the League was one of 42 non-governmental organizations invited by President Truman to serve as consultants to the U.S. delegation. Since then, the League has maintained a presence at the United Nations through its U.N. observers by working with U.N. agencies, member states, and other NGOs to advance League positions. And, of course, just a little woman's touch here also by periodically hosting League Day at the United Nations for the League members and for the members of the United Nations. So once again, many thanks. Stop by our table before you leave, and you will find a handy card to tell you everything you ever needed to know about voter registration and the upcoming elections. You will find our business card. You can ha get a bookmark. You can join the league. <laughs> and you can look at this, which is our calendar of local events uh, during this year. So thank you very much. So our third honoree this evening is the United Iowa City Student Climate Strikers. The Iowa City Climate Strikers are students who advocate and do direct action for climate justice. The students have been holding climate strikes each Friday for many months 
beginning when a handful of students walked out of classes in April of 2019. In August, the strikers were joined by Greta Thunberg at a Friday climate strike attended by thousands. The climate strikers have yielded results. The Iowa City Community School District agreed to create more curriculum around climate change and to increase recycling efforts. At the city level, the strikers' efforts led to a declaration from the Iowa City City Council declaring a climate emergency and amending the Climate Action and Adaptation Plan with an aim to reduce emissions. And the school board has since followed suit, I believe the only one in the state to do so, so far. The strikers continue to pursue their goals through new efforts, including addressing emissions at the University of Iowa level and urging the governor to declare a climate emergency. In December, U of I President Bruce Harold acknowledged a climate crisis and reiterated the need for the university to address the crisis. We've chosen to recognize the Iowa City student climate strikers this year out of recognition of the importance of their work in supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We are impressed with the progress the group made in 2019 and by their perseverance in continuing to fight, fight for climate justice. Who, do we have any of the climate strikers here this evening? Would you please come up to accept the certificate? So, this is Maddie Patterson and Sheila Zeithammel. So, on behalf of the Iowa City Climate Strikers, I would like to thank you for this award. We are incredibly honored. Our four main strikers, Massimo, Alex, Ian, and Elliot, have been on a weekly strike for an entire year because they believe in science and they agree with the scientists when they say that we have a climate emergency that demands immediate action. That means immediate action now, not when it's convenient. Not in 2030, not in 2050. Every two seconds, according to Oxfam, someone in the world is forced to become a refugee due to climate chaos. One in three species faces extinction within our lifetimes in a total ecological collapse. We all witnessed the devastating fires that happened in drought-stricken Australia earlier this year and the three floods that happened last year in Iowa. But global car carbon emissions hit an all-time high record last year. And last month, concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere were the highest ever in human history. Today, UN leader Antonio Guterres announced the world was way off track in climate action and that the climate crisis is already causing a great calamity. Here in Iowa, CO2 emissions increased by 3.38% last year and are on track to soar through 2030, even with our great wind production. As strikers, we have to ask ourselves, is this enough to accept well-meaning climate resolutions and kind words and even awards? For example, the Iowa City School District passed a cool climate resolution last year, but nine months later, virtually nothing has changed. No solar panels put on our schools, no extra classes on climate, no electric buses or more bike lanes. The city of Iowa City has updated their old climate plan thanks to our strikes, and it has moved towards on some solar, and is hiring a community outreach person like we requested, and it plans to do more in 2020. But where are the ordinances for a higher energy efficiency and mandatory renewable energy for all new buildings and carbon-free transportation like electric buses? And the University of Iowa continues to operate the single biggest con contributor to CO2 and air pollution in our town, the University Coal and Natural Gas Power Plant. How can the university present a 2030 sustainability plan if it still burns coal and natural gas? It's not just wrong to burn coal for five more years. It's reckless, especially considering other schools are investing in carbon neutral solutions like the University of Illinois, the University of California, and schools around the country. And the governor, well, Iowa's the only state in the Midwest with no climate plan. So the climate strikers have asked me to thank you for this award, but to respectfully say that we cannot accept it. Despite our year-long strike, we are still far away from meeting our obligations to cut carbon emissions. As Greta Thunberg has said, we have to treat this crisis like a crisis. We would like to put this award on hold until the school district, the city, the university, and the state of Iowa steps up and returns words, turns words into real climate action. In the meantime, however, we would like to pass this award to a woman leader who has stood by the climate strikers since the beginning, Sheila Zeithmull. Sheila has taken a stand with the strikers at the coal plant, at the school board, and city council hearings, and at the university. All year, she has stood with the strikers on the front lines of direct action for change. She realizes that we don't need hope. We need courage in an age of climate crisis. 
So on behalf of the Strikers, Sheila, we ask you to hold this award for the Strikers, and we look forward to the day when this award is put into action. Thank you. Thank you for your honest words. Thank you for continuing to push us forward. Uh, and thanks to all the honorees this evening. Could we have one more round of applause for them, please? So thank you, Janice, and awardees. And I wonder if, uh, at the conclusion of the program, if, if all of the awardees could assemble here at the beginning, and we'd like to get a, a group fo photo of you. Um, and I, I, as I was listening to, to the presentations and to the acceptances, it was running through my head how our, our chapter of UNA here in Johnson County uh, works in ways that resonate and run parallel and sometimes intersect with the work of these three organizations. I, 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 I noted when we selected these organizations that we really, we really selected three organizations that have a diverse membership style and history. The Climate Strikers are a very new organization. In fact, I'm not even sure it's an organization. It's more of a movement, I would say, than an organization. And, and the League of Women Voters is 100 years old, and uh, combined efforts is, is somewhere in the middle. You have very different missions, but what you all reflect is the power of, of local leadership. National leaders may drag their feet, may only pay lip service to the ideals in the UN, but it's through the work of organizations such as the three that we've honored tonight that pressure from below uh, is put on national leaders. And, I, for once, maybe I'm naive, but I still have the faith that leaders, at least in this country, will do the right thing when the public is informed and vocal. Uh, in, in, and then there were, there were some thoughts that ran through my head about specifically how uh, what, what we do in UNA uh, complements what these three organizations do. Uh, for combined efforts, our organization and our, has, has, has advocated for Senate ratification of the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. This was actually a convention which was championed by Iowa Senator Tom Harkin. It is one of several human rights conventions which have been signed by the United States but are awaiting ratification by the US Senate. And so uh, ratification of these human rights treaties remains a priority for our organization. For the League, I just discovered the other day that September 15th is the International Day of Democracy. And, and actually our organization, UNA, is going to give some emphasis to voter registration this September 15th in advance of the upcoming um, elections. And of course, we're, we're Johnny's come lately because the League has been doing this day in, day out for years and decades. So we look forward to learning from you and working with you on that. And, and for the climate strikers, I very much, I think I speak for the group, we very much uh, understand the challenge which you've presented. And we will indeed hold the award, maybe a long time, but we're going to hold that award and represent it. And I, I, I think it was just very touching and very appropriate that you uh, shared it with Sheila. Uh, we are actually uh, taking up a call from the UN Secretary General who has asked people around the world during this 75th anniversary year to engage in consultations at the community level where people get together and they talk, they, they address really large questions. What kind of a world do we want in 2045 when the UN is 100 years old? Are we on track to get that world? And if not, what are we going to do about it? We have decided that we want to focus on climate. Those are big issues, and we thought that given the imperative of, the cl of climate action and climate justice, that we would focus on climate. I'm just delighted that one of our board members, Barbara Eckstein, is working with the University of Iowa Office of Sustainability. We will be holding a consultation on Earth Day April 22nd in the morning in the Senate chambers at the Old Capitol. That will be <clears throat> a little Johnson County uh, contribution to this global consultation. It will focus on climate action. Jerry Schnoor, who is a world-renowned climate scientist and a member of our chapter, 
will be speaking that morning and then our consultation will follow after that and we will take these three large huge questions and focus them on on climate so that will be at least one initial step that that we will take and we look forward to doing more so thank you again uh, thank you all for coming. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks and congratulations to our honorees. Uh, your program says that there will be entertainment. I'm the entertainment. You just had it. <laughs> uh, our, our, we, we, we were hoping, we were, we were looking forward to welcoming members of the refugee com community to, to sing, but they became fearful about the uh, coronavirus, and so at the very last minute, they, they opted out. We're very sorry about that, and we hope they'll be able to join us next year. In the absence of more scintillating entertainment, uh, I will thank you once again, and, uh, and good night, and we'll see you next year.